an epic war is about to happen between our home galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy. Here's what will happen to Earth. Although everything may seem serene when we glance up at the night sky, appearances can be deceiving. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is speeding through the universe at an astounding 1.3 million miles per hour, even though we may not feel it. Also, it is heading straight for its neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy. The distance between these spiral galaxies, 2.5 million light years, won't always remain the same. The cosmic collision will happen sooner than anticipated, and the impending galactic collision will rip open the Milky Way's central black hole. Why is this happening right now? What happens to Earth when this eventual crash comes? Join us as we explore the fate of the Andromeda Galaxy and our Milky Way. The Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxies are the two largest galaxies in the so-called local group, a collection of several dozen massive and minute galaxies that are all bound by gravity. Because Andromeda and the Milky Way are the biggest, they control the gravitational pull and the group's future. The Milky Way is far smaller than the Andromeda Galaxy, which is speeding toward us at 68 miles per second. They will eventually merge to form a single massive spherical galaxy, which will take roughly 6 billion years. The supermassive black holes that are found at the centers of the Milky Way and Andromeda will also merge in this new galaxy, which is also referred to as Milkometer or Milkdromeda. The Andromeda Milky Way collision is surreal because we have known about it for hundreds of years. Astronomer Vesto Sleffer predicted that the Andromeda galaxy would collide with the Milky Way in the early 1900s. Since then, a large number of scientists have developed simulations to determine if these galaxies will collide or simply avoid one another. Then in 2012, scientists revealed a shocking discovery. They had used Hubble to very carefully monitor the speed of the Andromeda galaxy and discovered that it appeared to be traveling at 100 kilometers per second, pretty nearly directly toward the Milky Way. They estimated that the two galaxies would collide and cause chaos in around 4 billion years. Andromeda was found to be moving to the side a little bit more than previously believed in 2019, delaying the inevitable collision by around 600 million years. But new findings utilizing more recent data have just been made, and they suggest that Andromeda's sideways motion is still increasing. If this is the case, Andromeda might completely miss the Milky Way on this approach. The odd thing is that despite the appearance of contradiction, all of these metrics actually agree on some level. With the small and challenging to determine quantities involved, the issue here is statistical uncertainty in the measurements. So are we headed toward a collision or not? An object's velocity can be divided into two component directions, its radial velocity, or how quickly it moves toward or away from you, and its side velocity, which is the transverse velocity. Brace yourself for contact if something is moving at you with some speed, but no transverse velocity. But if it has some positive transverse velocity, it will be traveling not only toward you, but also sideways. It will miss if the transverse velocity is high enough. Because nature already has a mechanism in place to achieve this, determining the radial velocity of Andromeda is actually quite simple. The light of an object moving towards you is Doppler shifted, and its wavelength shortens. It is known as blue shifting. Taking galaxy spectra allows for a relatively simple and accurate measurement of this, and it has been determined to be approximately 100 km per hour or 360,000 km per hour. That is fast, right? What is its transverse velocity though? How quickly is it veering to the side? That is an important question, and it's quite difficult to measure. That is a long journey to Andromeda, which is located 2.5 million light years away. Consider it like this. Saturn is located a great distance from Earth at roughly 1 billion kilometers, and the Cassini spacecraft traveled there in seven years. Think about it returning to Earth after visiting Saturn for another seven years. Now imagine doing that a billion times. Congratulations, you've only come close to reaching Andromeda by traveling a tenth of the distance. Since Andromeda is so far away, any transverse motion appears to be extremely minor, making it difficult to measure. Most telescopes can't even measure the minute shift in its star's locations from year to year. As was previously mentioned, astronomers used Hubble to make incredibly accurate measurements over five to seven years to determine how quickly Andromeda was moving to the side. They discovered that it was moving at a speed of 17 kilometers per second. Since that is significantly slower than the radial velocity of 100 kilometers per second, it appears to be traveling directly in our direction. The most recent information from the Gaia satellite, which measures the brightness, locations, motions, and colors of well over a billion stars with amazing accuracy, 
was used by astronomers in their newest work. The process is challenging, but they ultimately discover that Andromeda's transverse velocity is approximately 82 kilometers per second. That seems to imply that Andromeda will miss us. This adds up to Andromeda heading at approximately a 40 degree angle to the side, which is enough to entirely miss the Milky Way if the transverse and radial velocities are roughly equal. As we have stated, there is a great deal of ambiguity in these measurements. Astronomers can give their findings a statistical level of uncertainty using a variety of statistical techniques. That is annoying. If the lower number is accurate, a collision is all but assured. If the higher one is, a miss is assured, and we are unable to distinguish between the two. Scientists are attempting to track the star's apparent movements through time. The more they move, and the more certain the measurements are, the greater the interval between measurements. The initial Hubble paper was published more than 10 years ago, so if it were done again today, the results would be far more reliable. Moreover, Gaia is still observing. Gaia's updated data, which will be released again when all five years of the nominal mission have been processed, are anticipated to be much more accurate than the prior data. So, if astronomers have a few more years, these calculations ought to get more precise. And then, perhaps we'll be able to say with certainty whether we'll need to buckle up for a cosmic collision in eons, or watch as Andromeda safely passes us at a distance of a million or two light years. What if it's determined to collide with us? Well, Andromeda is currently roughly 2.5 million light years away. It will engage in a cataclysmic dance that lasts billions of years when it collides with our galaxy in less than 4 billion years tearing it and the Milky Way apart to produce a new galaxy. Yet, Earthlings will get to see a stunning spectacle right before Andromeda collides. The two galaxies will defeat one another easily, 250 million years after the collision. All that will be left will be the ghostly skeleton of two separate galaxies. But it's not over yet. Until the supermassive black holes at the heart of each galaxy are close enough to fuse, the conflict will last for billions of years. If Earth is still around after 6 billion years of cosmic destruction, the elliptical galaxy's bright new center will be visible in the night sky. In fact, you might want to adjust your doomsday clocks accordingly. A major collision involving the Milky Way occurred around 10 billion years ago, and smaller galaxies are frequently absorbed by larger galaxies as they pass through their orbits. There is a chance that the Milky Way as we know it will terminate a few billion years early. The spiral of stars known as the Large Magellanic Cloud LMC, one of our parent galaxy's closest satellites, likewise seems to be on a collision course with it. Approximately 2 to 3 billion years earlier than the long-expected collision between the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy, this cosmic disaster might start as soon as 2 billion years from now, according to a team of astrophysicists at Durham University in the UK. Despite the fact that the LMC only has around 1 20th the solar mass of the Milky Way, the collision would nonetheless permanently alter both galaxies, sparking previously dormant black holes, hurling stars billions of kilometers out of orbit, and dispersing cosmic radiation over the sky. Our galaxy will suffer greatly from the annihilation of the big Magellanic cloud as it gets sucked up by the Milky Way. In the unexpectedly crowded expanse of space, galactic collisions happen frequently and scientists are getting very skilled at simulating how recent mergers might proceed. The Durham team simulated a number of potential outcomes for the upcoming Milky Way LMC merger using the supercomputer collision simulator, Eagle. What aspects of our galaxy will change? The Milky Way's central black hole would likely receive a massive influx of new gas and stars from the merging LMC, giving the once sleeping giant a new life. One of the brightest objects in the universe, a quasar, is created when a supermassive black hole sucks in and spits out blazing celestial matter at close to light speed. Such a collision could bulk up the black hole to about eight times its current size. If this occurs, the stars that are currently residing in the Milky Way's galactic center would regrettably have to give up their familiar surroundings to a brand new population of cosmic emigrants from the LCM. The researchers predict that many stars will be pulled into the expanding black hole at the galactic center. Other stars may be hurled headfirst into interstellar space, quadrillions of miles away, in response to all the extra material flowing into their area. Thankfully, the merger will only have a minor impact on a small number of stars that are located close to the sun in 2 billion years from now. The scientists concluded that there is relatively little risk to life on Earth. And on the plus side, the Milky Way's newest quasar may even provide future Earthlings a stunning display of cosmic fireworks. What awaits us in the future? 
we won't be around to witness the collisions. But thanks to the power of the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, also known as the Just Fantastic Space Telescope, we will be able to see them in exquisite detail. By the time we merge with Andromeda, our Sun will be a red giant that will first swallow up Mercury and Venus before expanding to a diameter equal to that of Earth's orbit. Yet even before that, the Sun can be really problematic for us. You may be familiar with the Carrington event, a severe geomagnetic storm that destroyed telegraph wires in 1859. It and a similar solar explosion in 1921 were mainly considered to be curiosities at the time. But today, scientists consider them to be warnings that a solar blast might result in catastrophic fires and meltdowns in our electrical infrastructure and satellite networks. Although it could be worse, that would be bad. A solar flare from the year 775 that was 10 or 100 times more intense was discovered in 2012 by astronomers. Now scientists searching for unusual isotopes in ice cores have discovered proof of two further super flares that occurred 5,259 and 7,176 years ago, respectively. That will happen again eventually, and we are not ready for what is coming for us all. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.